Greek family. Saint Therese and her little way to holiness. Dressed up like that. I'm Joan of Arc, the greatest saint of all time. The bravest. No one can beat me because I'm not afraid of anything. <laughs> When I grow up, I'll become a great saint, Saint Sarah. And I'll be in every newspaper and everyone will talk about me. They'll write my life story, the story of Sarah the Brave. So you're going to be a great saint, are you? Yes, like Joan of Arc. Well, in order to become such a saint, you can start by straightening up your room. That's not heroic. Are you making fun of me? No, of course not. Do you know who Saint Therese of Lisieux was? She sounds familiar, but I'm not sure. She was a great saint as well. Pope John Paul II called her the greatest saint of modern times. Really? Yes. Saint Therese of Lisieux is the patron saint of missionaries, no less. Wow. And do you know why she was so holy? Because she discovered a little way to holiness, searching for God in little things. Things like cleaning my room. Yes. For example, Saint Therese taught us that we can be very holy and go to heaven through little things every day. You'll see. Therese was born into a very Catholic family. Her parents taught her to pray from the time she was small. Sometimes Therese went fishing with her father, and while he fished, she withdrew to pray for a while. She liked to be alone with God. Therese's mother died when she was only four years old. The poor child suffered a great deal and missed her. So her sister Pauline, who was much older, cared for her like a mother. Are you going to become a nun, Pauline? Yes, I've decided. And Therese? Since mother died, you've been like a second mother to her. Therese will be fine because you'll take care of her. Promise me you will. Of course, but when she finds out, I'm sure she'll be upset. Is it true that you are going to leave me? Oh, my dear. Who is going to be my mother now? Honey, Marie will take care of you better than me. You to be a nun. I don't want you to leave. Therese, I want to offer my whole life to God. Being in Carmel is like being in heaven, very, very close to God. I'll pray for you every day, and I'll be with you, even though you can't see me. But Pauline, I want to go with you. Oh, child, you can't come now. You're still very young. Then I'll grow up very quickly. From that time, Therese decided that she wanted to be a nun for the rest of her life. So she could be with her sister, Pauline. No, in order to be close to God. She was convinced that Carmel was the desert in which God also wanted her to hide herself. But I don't like to hide. I want to be like Joan of Arc. I don't want to be closed up in a convent. <laughs> the important thing is to love God. It doesn't matter if you're living in a convent or if you're in the president of a country. But let me tell you more of the story. You see, Therese was the pampered little girl of the family. Everyone treated her with much affection and she let them spoil her. Until something happened on Christmas night. What happened? Christmas was a very special time for Therese. It was a magical and very beautiful time. For me, too. I love Christmas. Therese left her shoe next to the fireplace to be filled with gifts, as always. And then she went up to her room to change her clothes for supper. 
But when she was going up the stairs, she heard the voice of her father. I'm worn out. Thank goodness this is the last Christmas. But Papa, Therese is so enthusiastic about decorating the house, putting a shoe next to the fireplace. Daughter, I'm very tired. Therese is already too old for these things. I'm sure she'll understand. You're crying on Christmas night. He doesn't like Christmas. Of course he likes it. It's just that he misses Mama and he's tired. That's all. I miss her as well. Look, you can't eat supper like this. Stay in your room. I'll say you aren't feeling well. If you go to supper sad, the others will also become sad. Of us. Today, everyone should be happy. Please don't ruin supper. I will go to supper. Are you sure? Yes. Papa was right. I'm not a child. I'll wash my face and I'll be smiling. Are you sure? I promise. At that moment, Therese realized it was necessary to forget herself in order to please others. But Therese was so sad. Yes, we're sad when we think about ourselves. When we spend all that time thinking, I'm sad, I'm tired. But when we think about others, we forget our own problems and we're happy. Because we try to make those around us happy. Therese decided to think about others, especially about those who needed God's help the most. Extra! Extra! Murderer condemned to death! He will be executed this afternoon! Extra! Read the murderer's sentence! This afternoon, he will pay for his crimes with his life! Lord, I ask with all my heart that this man be converted. Please don't let him go to hell. Make him repent of his sins and confess, please. I'm very sorry for him. Give me a sign so I'll know you've heard my prayer, Lord. You are good. Help him to repent before dying. Therese prayed a lot for that man. She didn't know him at all, but she was very sorry if he were condemned forever. Extra! Extra! Read all about the repentant murderer! The murderer asked for a crucifix and kissed it twice! The convict confessed and died in peace with God! Read the whole story in this morning's newspaper! Thank you, Lord. From now on, I know that I want to be a nun, so I can offer you my entire life in order to save sinners. I know that you always hear me. Thank you, dear Lord. Of course it is. What did you think? Prayer reaches God, and God can do anything. Does God always hear me? Yes, God always hears us, and especially children. Wow! You see, Therese wanted to enter Carmel, which was a convent in Lisieux. But they didn't want to admit her because she was only 15 years old. So do you know what she did? She went to Rome to ask the Pope to speak with her bishop so that they would admit her. To Rome? That's right. How brave! 
She must have really wanted to enter the convent. The Pope told her that she had to obey her bishop. Therese was sad, but then she became very happy because she realized that it was God's will. After a short time, the bishop approved her entrance into Carmel, even though she was very young. You let her enter so young because Therese asked many times, right? Of course. The bishop realized that although Therese was very young, she was very sure that her vocation was to enter Carmel and be a nun forever. Papa, give me your blessing. Bless you, my child. I bless you. Lord, I've come to offer you my entire life. I want to offer you each moment of my life to save souls and especially to pray for priests. Therese served the other nuns all day, helping them with their work in the convent. The sister in charge of the sacristy called her affectionately, Amen. She called Therese Amen? Yes, because Therese was always willing to obey what they told her. That winter was very hard. Three sisters died and most were sick in bed. Therese and two other nuns took care of everything. They cared for the sick nuns, prepared food, washed clothes, she was made a saint just for doing those little things? That's the little way to holiness that Therese discovered. She realized that God was behind each sister who was sick, each sheet that she washed, each potato that she peeled. But I thought that the great saints had done heroic things. Offering to God the little things that we do every day is also heroic. Lord, I want to be a great saint because I love you very much, but I know I'm a very little thing. I want to be a missionary in all the countries of the world, but I'm living in Carmel. How can I do that without leaving the convent? She then discovered that keeping a list of good actions isn't important, but rather letting God be the one who does it all. Abandoning oneself into his hands. In this way, if we know that we have nothing, God will provide everything and will act through us. Therese thought, Since I'm such a little thing, I have nothing important to offer God. So I will do for love all the little things that I do during the day, even peeling potatoes. And if I offer these things to God, it will be God himself who does them. That is the little way to holiness. I must accept myself as I am with all my imperfections. And God will say to me, Whosoever is little, let him come unto me. What is important is to do everything for the love of God. All our good works are worthless if we don't do them for love. And what does it mean to do them for love? It means doing them because we love others as God loves them. In this way, Therese found her true vocation. My vocation is love. May others see in me the love that God has for them. May I see God in others. But that's very hard because God loves us very much. He loves us more than all the mothers and fathers in the world. Yes, but I'll show you a trick. A trick? That's right. The trick is to see Jesus in others. Wow. Treat others as if they were Jesus himself.
There was a nun who Therese especially didn't like. She had a difficult personality, and Therese couldn't stand her. Then, she decided to treat her as if she were Jesus himself. Thank you, Sister Therese. You're welcome. Sister, I would like to ask you why you always smile when you see me. Do you really like me? I'm very pleased to see you, sister. The truth is that Therese saw Jesus in that sister, so she made an effort to please her, even though she didn't like her. It's like that pest parlor who always wants to play with me. I don't like her. She's stuck up. She thinks she's the prettiest girl in the class, and that makes me furious. So I always make up excuses not to play with her. Well, honey, perhaps you've learned something from St. Therese of Lisieux. You're right, Mom. I'm going to call her. Paula? I was thinking that maybe you would like to get together this afternoon to play. Yes? Then you'll come over to my house? Okay, we'll see you at five. That's all right. We're friends, aren't we? Goodbye. I think what you just did was beautiful. She was surprised because I never call her to play with me. In fact, I think I'm her only friend because the others can't stand her either. She was very happy. <laughs> They assigned her to pray for various missionaries who were leaving for missions to Africa and Asia. Therese prayed a lot for them and offered small sacrifices to God. She wrote to them often. She also wanted to be a missionary. She wanted it so badly that she wouldn't have been satisfied going to a single country. She would have wanted to go to all the countries of the world, but that was impossible because she was living in a cloistered convent. You know something? She prayed and offered so many sacrifices for missionaries that after her death, she was proclaimed the patron saint of missions. The patron saint of missions? But she never went to any mission. No, but prayers and sacrifices are the most important things for any mission. Prayer is like an engine for missionaries. So, Therese, even though she was cloistered in a convent, was a great help for missions. Then, even though I'm a little and in this house, I can do many big things for the church and for the world. That's right. You don't need to go far in order to help others. I can even help people that I don't know. It's enough to pray, right? That's right. Prayer reaches everyone. It's as if a ray of light goes out from you that is so intense that it could light up the whole planet. Wow! Therese became ill with tuberculosis and suffered a great deal. She coughed without stopping and <laughs> suffered great pain. <laughs> you know, Pauline, life is not sad, but very joyful because everything that happens is God's will. <laughs> I want to be sick all my life if this pleases the Lord. I only want what God wants. How is she? She's dying, Mother. Open all the doors. Pauline thought that Jesus was saying these same words to his angels at that moment. Open the doors of heaven so Therese may enter. You know, Mommy, every morning I'll clean my room before going to school. 
and offer to God this small sacrifice, like Saint Therese did. I'm very pleased, my dear, and I'm sure that Jesus will also be very happy seeing you. Good night. Good night, Mommy. How are you? Exhausted. I've had a lot of work today. You want me to bring you something to eat? Thanks, but right now I only need to rest. I don't think I could get up, not even with a forklift. You know, I told Sarah the story of Saint Therese of Lisieux and her little way to holiness. That's good, dear. I know we should give them examples in the small things that we do for them. You're right. And they'll see how you and I walk along that little way of holiness. Dad, I'm not sleepy. You aren't? I can't sleep. I'm bored. That's okay, champ. I'll go up with you. Will you stay with me for a while? Okay. And you'll tell me a story? You can count on it. Good! I want to hear the one about those dwarfs that worked in that mine, and then the ogre comes and... All right, all right. I'll tell you that story.